Um, there are different views on it, like it is in more, with many cases in diabetes treatment. However, I see that also in the future, self-monitoring of blood glucose will have a role in diabetes therapy. There are a number of aspects I think we have to keep in mind. Even if we would have continuous glucose monitoring as the standard method for monitoring glucose in the future, I still see a need for a good calibration method. And this is then done with a capillary conventional self-monitoring of blood glucose, one aspect. The other aspect, some, a certain amount or a portion of patients are not interested in having a device attached to them all the time. And they might prefer even in the future to use a conventional capillary blood glucose measurement. So might also other patients that for other reasons, cultural reasons and so on, are interested also in the future to use self-monitoring of blood glucose. And last but not least, costs. The question is a little bit, what are the costs of continuous glucose monitoring right now? They are much higher at least a certain number, amount higher than uh, self-monitoring of blood glucose. So I see that we will have a transition to continuous glucose monitoring as a standard in the future, but it will not happen tomorrow, but in over a period of 10 years probably. There are a number of hurdles, um, I think, <laughs> The most important we just tackled a second ago when we talked about costs. At least in a number of countries, the healthcare system would be in trouble if all patients with diabetes from one day to the other that should monitor their glucose levels would use continuous glucose monitoring immediately. The costs are currently in the range of a couple of euro per day if this price comes down to, let's say, one euro per day, then it might be that this is not a big hurdle. In other countries, again, also the insurance companies say, okay, we still have the test trips and we are used to them, and we will wait until we have more evidence that with continuous glucose monitoring, the same outcome will be achieved. And another hurdle is that we have no standards for continuous glucose monitoring systems in other words, we don't know, like we have with blood glucose meters, what is the quality of the measurements. See, I think what we have seen over the last 10, 15 years is a massive improvement in the analytical performance of the different CGM systems. And in the last years, we have seen an, a, a broadening of the different opportunities. I think the most significant impact was with the invention of the Freestyle Libre system. I call it an intermittent scanning CGM system. And this has pushed continuous glucose monitoring in general ahead a lot, especially now after the system is in the US market. And we also have on the other hand of the spectrum an interesting system which has to be implanted and patients can then use it for 180 days uh, in a relatively minor um, interventional mode, and I think this is an interesting development as well. There's a, as usual, there's a range of different topics, and we are at the very beginning of the conference. From what I have seen that far, we will see a number of interesting presentations about different types of insulins. We will also hear a number of things about artificial or automated insulin delivery systems, also systems that patients manufacture by themselves. But we will also, coming to your point, see a number of new data about continuous glucose monitoring. And as I tried to indicate, there are some well-established manufacturers that produce or have new generations of the system, but also interesting new data by startup companies that we will see here in the next days.